doing it in the desert. You know, as much as we have talked about being and putting on the belt of truth and being real, especially in these videos, I hope <laughs> no one gets the wrong impression about me. I am provocable. <laughs> I'm not always Mr. Nice Guy. But it's interesting is that in the ministry, especially if you're a, an internet-based ministry or that you do a lot of things in life that you deal with people, people I pretty much can see or understand coming from a distance and then also likewise on the internet, a lot of times I can evaluate information because I've been so long on the internet that a lot of things are very easy and especially with the gift of discernment and word of knowledge, word of wisdom, all these weird things, you kind of know where something's coming from and where it's going. But still, sometimes there are just some things that just really get me and just bug me big time. Especially when it involves deceiving people or somehow tripping them up or getting them like off tangent, you know, off of Jesus, off onto other things that distract so easily. It just frustrates me. It's like, why, Lord? Why let this go on, you know? And, and sometimes, you know, you see something that could be so wonderful that they've done such a wonderful job and then they go off on a tangent. And they go off and they're somewhere out in left field, you know, and you think, you know, and you want to fix it and you can't. So there's one that really gets me and it's in prophecy and it's just a real challenge that I really need prayer for. I just can't do it in myself. I can't stop myself from reacting to it. It gets me. It bugs me. It's something that just... They could be so great, and yet they always seem to be going into making money and doing other things and, you know, goofing off and being whatever they are. And I know that, you know, we can't save the world, you know, we, we can't change what God has already determined for how many people will be saved, that there's only a certain portion of people that will respond to the gospel, but still, there is a great heart that's inside of me that wants to go, you know, and grab everyone I can and, you know, look, listen, you know, or, hey, you know, you're supposed to be a Christian, why aren't you helping, you know, <laughs> and it just bugs me sometimes. So don't ever get the wrong idea that, you know, I'm Mr. Nice Guy all the time or that I don't have my own issues that I struggle with so that I don't react even as I share these in devotionals, that I don't react to that ministry or I don't let that influence my my sharing with Jesus because it will. I mean, there's been in my life where I've known that attitudes and actions that are carried over from other places will affect what you bring forth if you let it. You don't have to. See, that's the whole difference is that because we're given the Holy Spirit, you don't have to let your flesh control you know, your actions. You don't have to run out there, you know, and snap at somebody. You don't have to, you know, be influenced by your own emotions or moods. Although sometimes I'll admit, you know, some people have a hard time with it. But the longer you're a born-again Christian, the more you can let your Holy, the Holy Spirit inside you grow up your spirit to control your flesh in a better way than what you may have been experiencing today or you may have experienced so far. Because you can't do it yourself. I know, I've tried. I've tried to get rid of this whole thing with my issue, and man, it just, eh, 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 no matter what I do, it just gets me. <laughs> it's a button that's very, very easy to push. And so every time it is pushed, I have to, you know, suck it back in and turn it to the Lord and say, God, <laughs> you know what I'm thinking. Just don't let me say it, and let's go forward. And so sometimes, you know, I pray that you too can be just as real today with someone and share with them your heart so that the Lord can be with you in all that you do today. In Streams in the Desert, it is not in me. <laughs> I remember a summer in which I said, it is the ocean I need. And I went to the ocean. But it seemed to say, it's not in me. The ocean did not do for me what I thought it would. Then I said, I think I'll go to the mountains. The mountains will rest me. And I went to the mountains. 
And when I awoke in the morning, there stood the grand mountain that I had wanted so much to see. But it seemed to say to me, it's not in me. It did not satisfy. I needed the ocean of his love and the high mountains of his truth within. It was wisdom that the depths said they did not contain and that could not be compared with jewels of gold or precious stones. Jesus is wisdom and fills our deepest need. Our restlessness within can only be met by the revelation of his eternal friendship and love for us. Whenever we seek to fill something in the world to find God who created the world, what we're really looking for is the God of the world. And the God of the world that currently is in charge, that thinks he's in charge, is Satan. But the God who created it and who is the God of gods and who is Lord of lords and who is in control of all things is our Father. And so he is the one that you're seeking when you look for and you want to find in some way something that you can't see in any other way except to go there and discover that. It just doesn't quite do it, does it? You cannot detain the eagle in the forest. You may gather around him a chorus of the choicest birds. You may give him a perch on the goodliest pine. You may charge winged messengers to bring him the choicest dainties, but he will spurn them all. Spreading his lofty wings and with his eye on the alpine cliff, he will soar away to his own ancestral halls and munition of rocks and wild music of tempest and waterfall. The soul of man in its eagle soarings will rest with nothing short of the rock of ages. Its ancestral halls are the halls of heaven. Its munitions of rocks are the attributes of God. The sweep of its majestic flight is eternity. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. I know for myself that I wanted to go to Oregon, and I wanted to go to Alaska, and I wanted to go to Israel, and I wanted to go to Jerusalem, and I did all these things, and I wanted to be a missionary, and I went to Mexico. And in all these things, they weren't as big or as great as I had made them out to be. But when, the only thing that I could ever find that really was greater than I ever even imagined and was beyond anything I could ever imagine, believe it or not, was God. It sounds stupid, but no, I'm talking about real emotional way that I've never experienced more emotion, I've never experienced more feeling, I've never experienced anything beyond, you know, what could only go exponentially beyond my comprehension was God himself and the person of the Holy Spirit in me and taking me to things that there's no way to explain and no capability to understand and went beyond my visual perceptions because all that I went to, whether Jerusalem, whether Alaska, whether Oregon, whether the beaches, whether the east coast, the west coast, the north, the south, none of it was quite what I thought it was and it wasn't as happy as I really thought it would be and it wasn't quite what people make it out to be. Even though they think it's wonderful, I still look at it and go, well, okay, you know, but I've seen better. When you've tasted of heaven, nothing else satisfies. It kind of ruins you for earth. And much as I'd like to say that, you know, all these things are wonderful, to me they still look like God's creation under a curse. And so someday we will be satisfied when we find ourselves only looking to Him and seeing that He's standing there with us, even as He's sitting with us right now.